real talk guys for the past two days i haven't unboxed anything it feels bad it hurts but today the solution arrived and people asked me if i also could unbox something without using any knife no problem you see here on this channel we're switching things Ooh. That is nice. Eight voice wavetable synthesizer module. Argon 8M. Thank you very much. I haven't ordered this. Sometimes companies are, are nice and just sending me stuff. This is highly appreciated. It helps to keep my gear addiction satisfied. And it also helps me to just start the day in the best way possible. That's nice. Heavy wavetable synthesizer. Very, very interesting. It looks very good, very solid. Can't wait to power it on and see what it sounds like. Ooh, look at this one. There is like a, a joystick. Wow, I love it. It's fun. It's definitely fun. I'm even considering to build it into, into the table. I only put in here stuff I absolutely love. And this thing, I mean, it's a synthesizer. And usually for synthesizers, I just use plugins because it's like faster. The sound is pretty, pretty close. Just like for the mastering stuff and mixing stuff, I use outboard gear. But this one right here has, has a twist. And this twist makes it just so much more fun for example here if i open up the cutoff it shows it to me on the display which i like but at the same time there is a plug-in version and it's also turning the cutoff on there so you can recall it you can save presets it's fully controllable through through the app through the vst au and also on the device so back and forth same as the better maker stuff same as, as the west audio stuff same as the Tigler stuff, it, it interacts, it's recallable. And that actually makes it way, way more likely me using it. Because all of the other outboard gear that I can't recall, I don't know, I'm just so lazy to run it through once and it degrades the quality and, and most plugins are really good. So I only try to have outboard gear that isn't available as a plugin. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll test it more in the coming days. I didn't even know it exists, but it just fits perfectly into my setup. Anyways, it's time for some music making. I'm happy, very, very happy to finally announce that my song Watch Me Burn is finally finished, 100%. I got vocals today, replacement vocals. So I could actually, I don't know if you remember, there was like a part where, I mean, the vocals had like reverb on top, delay on top, compression on top. So I, I, I couldn't take them where I wanted. And in some parts, the doubles, the lower octave ones, were panned to one side a little, which was awkward. I could fix all of that. And I also readjusted the mix a little. Previously, it was sounding very, very pop, which I think sounds nice, but doesn't really fit 100% to a song that is more club driven, more kick and bass driven. So I redistributed the mix a little, made it a little more narrow in the lower frequencies again. And I also emphasized the kick a little more, exchanged the kick, louder kick, punchier kick, cutting through a little more. Yes, I'm losing loudness because that's always like the conflict. If you make things big in the low end, which is really nice, you lose out loudness in general. You could make the kick and the bass very short to compensate it, but a very short kick and very short bass also sounds weird. So it's always that like, back and forth i always imagine like mixing like, like like being a box that you can fill with elements and if you put a big element in there it will take away space of all of the other elements usually kick and bass take up like half of the space and the rest just sits somewhere on top at least for edm and if you have like a, a pop ballad where the vocals should take like half of the space kick and bass get a lot smaller and and thinner and shorter 
and more in the background. That's always something you have to keep in mind. There's nothing you can do against it. There is no way to have a huge vocal, a huge bass, a huge clap, a huge guitar. This will all interfere with each other, at least not at the same time. You can distribute these things in the arrangement. I think one of the best examples that is doing it in a very simple but smart way is, for example, um, Sugar by Robin Schultz. It's like the oldest trick in the book. The song starts in the intro with like drums and a guitar. The guitar is the main thing. And the second, the second the vocals are introduced, the guitar is filtering, closing the filter by a lot. So you only hear, hear like 200, 300 hertz and not much up. The rest is then left to the vocal. And your brain already listened to the full fat guitar with all of the frequencies. And then when it's gone, your brain kind of compensates for it. And the song puts the vocal on top and it, it sounds really nice and really good. So arranging in a smart way can rescue your mix 100%. In each and every section of your song, you have to think about what's the main thing in here. For example, in the break, it might be the vocal that is leading up to the drop. Right before the drop, the main thing is probably like those energy elements, drum rolls, um, effects. They should be in the focus. On the drop, kick and bass. And also here, kick and bass. If you have a huge kick, your bass needs to be smaller. If your bass is huge, your kick needs to be smaller. There's always this kind of balance when it comes to mixing. And there is a hard limit. It hasn't changed in recent years. There's just like more techniques to try and squeeze out more and use the space in this box of mixing more efficiently and kind of um, put like elements in a song, like mesh them more together. For example, I know a lot of top producers, especially like dubstep producers, if they want their snare to cut through, they make everything else disappear whenever the snare hits. So they use track space or side chaining to sidechain everything away and just have the snare in there. That's just how you get the best, clearest kind of sounds if you just make everything else disappear. Same with kick, bass, sidechaining them. Whenever the kick hits, the bass disappears really quick. Gives you the illusion of gluing them together, separating them at the same time to make both kind of shine. It just works. I hope all of this makes sense. It's kind of like, it's a dance of elements, like just, I love to, like, whenever I, I teach beginners, which doesn't happen a lot, but I, I try to, to like, because most beginners do too much. They layer too much. They put too many tracks in there. They just overcrowd and cloud the entire mix, and then they're wondering why they can't mix it. Think of, like, the, the band principle. Every song, every pop song, and I, I count EDM and, and like, hip-hop as pop music, like, all popular music, that is being listened to right now, that is not classic music, follows this principle. You have a drummer on stage, you have a guitar player on stage, someone taking care of the, the chords. Could be piano, it could be a synthesizer, it could be a pad, whatever. And someone singing, like a lead singer. That's not a lot, that's, that's easy to mix. The, the drummer takes care of the very low frequencies and the very top frequencies, kicks and hats. The guitar player is taking care of rhythm usually and is more to the side. And also in bands, whenever the singer is singing, the guitar usually is a little lower, is playing less or not playing at all. And if the guitar is playing a solo, there is no voice. Then of course the singer, this could be an EDM or an instrumental track replaced by a main synthesizer. And then we have something playing chords. It doesn't have to be all the time, but some harmonic information in a song definitely helps if it's just kick and bass and voice. It's cool for a bit in the song, but not the entire duration. And that's all you need. If you put more into a song, I mean, of course, effects to glue like the parts together and stuff like that, ear candy, but those are just the small bits. But if you follow this principle and don't put more into a song than that, don't have five lead guitarists. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Think of them being on stage. Think of your song being on stage. Is it possible? Would it make sense? If it doesn't make any sense, then kick someone out. You don't need someone taking care of the same role twice, three times, four times. So yeah, I hope this helps. It's more like a principle of mixing than actually showing you how to mix. But I think this kind of stuff sometimes helps. It, it helps me a lot because I sometimes 
have 10 tracks too many in a song, I start deleting them, muting them, and everything opens up. Every other element has more space to breathe and shine, which just helps the track in general. And if you have too many elements in there, it's sometimes two or three song ideas in one song, just make different songs. It should be simple. People should be able to follow along, sing along. And yeah, that's, that's it. I will now work on another song, the one that doesn't have a name, since Watch Me Burn is now all done. It's really, really done. I will send it off today to Spotify. And the release will be in a month or two. Not, not sure yet. But I'm gonna run.